I think there are a number of challenges. Uh, perhaps one of the greatest is to marshal the funding to support the research that we're proposing. Uh, in many parts of the world, um, funding for scientific research is quite tight and we're proposing a very ambitious program. But I think we think it's worth it in terms of the solutions that we would hope to deliver to society. Um, so I think the funding is a major challenge. I think the second is ensuring that we bring a new generation of young scientists, that this is not the same old group of scientists working uh, together. We need to, for the first time, do research that connects the local scale of a farmer, a fishing community, all the way to the region and to the global scale. So there's a new type of research to be done when it comes to how scales interact and different knowledge systems. And moreover, we need a new way of communicating, so to bridge knowledge to society so we can speed up change towards a sustainable transition. Everyone agrees that science has to get closer with society and they need to work together in solving the sustainability challenge. The problem is, as I see it, is that they speak two different languages. Scientists are not used to speaking in policymakers' terms and vice versa. Policymakers generally are not tooled and schooled in science. And so, in order to really go further, to deal with the sustainability challenge, both scientists and policymakers and other stakeholders are going to have to learn how to speak the same language. The main challenges are to make sure that the scientific community works closely together with the end users. We need to be demand driven. We need to work with governments, the private sector, civil society at large. We need to bring together scientists from developing countries with the industrialized countries. We also see that we really want to bring more together the expertise from the more developed nations with the developing nations, enabling them, building capacity around the globe to engage in the science that is integrated, that informs societies and decision makers on their quest to find a pathway of development which is probably more sustainable than the one that most of us are on right now. I think one of the challenges, of course, is moving from where we are now structurally into where we want to be and moving the community from where it is now, which is not as integrated as we would like, to more integrated structure. And so we're providing a structure where they can be more integrated with each other. And so getting the, in fact, getting the structure right so that the function follows is a big challenge because this is really a step change in the way the scientific community um, will be operating. I think uh, people could identify lots of challenges. They could identify the challenges associated with setting up such a big new initiative. They could identify the challenges of finding new ways to do uh, research. Uh, to bring the beneficiaries of those research together with the researchers themselves to co-design and perhaps in the future to co-produce new knowledge. But I think that ultimately our challenge will uh, always be the basic research challenges, the challenges of how to respond to some of uh, these major societal needs and all of those are associated with really exciting but really tough uh, scientific challenges demanding knowledge across the, the natural social science domains, engineering and other communities as well and it's the, that challenge of providing the new knowledge needed which is I think uh, what's central to what Future Earth can do.